Your Black Business Awards crowned the best in entrepreneurship last night. The awards, which have been running for 16 years, promote sustainable black business. We're joined by two of the winners this morning. Mohamed Sinji took the prize for the youngest entrepreneur, and Sandy Swat Kai represents a business that won the prize for the Innovative Business Award. Um, thank you so much, and congratulations on your wins last night. Thank How do you, you feel? Thank you so much. Yeah. Ah, sure, still feeling excited. I can't get over the <laughs> <laughs> as you should be, as you yes. absolutely should be. Um, Sandy, so you won, you won um, a, a, an award in the category of innovative businesses. Tell me about your energy company and what you do specifically. I mean, I just think it's really interesting and uh, quite admirable that you, are, you find yourself in a field that is so important at this time in our history in South Africa, um, what with load shedding and problems with our, um, with our energy utility. Tell me about it. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, my company, AUT Africa, we mm -hmm. are innovators and manufacturers of energy efficiency products. Yes. Our special focus we, within the water heating space, mm -hmm. where we aim to retrofit uh, geysers, your existing residential or commercial geysers, mm -hmm. with the device we call the, the hotspot geyser sleeve. What it does, uh, it, it allows you to hit the volume of hot water that you need, but at the same time saving you about se uh, 27 percent of your of your energy on monthly basis without switching your giza on and off the reason why we focus on energy efficiency and, and your giza mm -hmm. the, the studies shows that 50 percent of your monthly electricity goes towards your water heating and the giza is the biggest consumer of your of your energy so as someone uh, who, who, who was staying in a, in a small town and, and then I had my geyser and then it was only me and my helper at home and I felt like every day I'm hitting this hot water mm. and then I'm paying so much money and mm. I had to switch my geyser on and off, waking up at half past four so that I can uh, switch my geyser on so that I can have hot water to shower at, at six. And I oh felt my. this is ridiculous oh, at the end of the day. <laughs> and at the same time... I felt like the time I was not talking to me, and I mm -hmm. also felt like, okay, if I switch now to, uh, I don't have money to, mm. to switch to an alternative at Absolutely. this stage. I've got to, I already have like the conventional geyser. But how do we improve what we have? Because as AET Africa, we focus on, we say, let's reuse what we have, let's mm. conserve what we have. So that's how we, we focus on the yeah. energy efficiency uh, as the company. And then we find uh, innovative solutions that talk to ordinary citizens so for day to day. Because I realize I'm not the only one who's got that problem. And when we looked into the market, about six million geysers that are already on grid, and yeah. most of them are electricity yeah. geysers. So how do we improve that? And how do we contribute then in terms of reducing load shedding? Because the reason that we've got load shedding, it's because there's high demand on the grid. Absolutely. So if we improve the energy efficiency of your biggest consumer, which is the geyser, then it means we're contributing in terms of reducing the, the amount of load that's on the grid, and yeah. then uh, address the load shedding issue. Now hold that thought. I want to go to Mohammed. I, I want to talk to you specifically about innovating as as an entrepreneur. Mohammed, you won in the category of, um, of of a young entrepreneur. Tell me about your journey in technology specifically. Um, what do you do? you've got? You've, your company is called A Two D Two Four. Very, it's not very Star Warsy to me, but you know. <laughs> um, tell me about what A Two D Two Four does mm. and 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 how how you got into the specific field. Yeah, sure. I mean, th thanks for having me. I think, so what, what we do at ATD24 is we bring the world's best technology to solve challenges in healthcare and mm -hmm. in retail. Yeah. And uh, so wh what we do is we actively you know, engage with clients in healthcare and retail, understand what their problems are, and then literally we scour the world for the world's best solution, I, you know, be it facial recognition, uh, be it machine learning, whatever it is, and we bring that technology in a way that our clients can use it and apply it to actively solve their problems. Yeah, yeah. Um, how my, my journey started literally about four years yeah. ago today it was Easter weekend and uh, so I had a bit of extra time off my day job and uh, I built the first I'm a software developer by by background and so I built the first software application which later became you know was one of HD 24's first product yeah. I built it over the weekend I didn't think anyone <laughs> would really like it yeah. or you know, like I, I find that interesting because I think we often talk about entrepreneurship or perhaps uh, as, as a national conversation, we talk about entrepreneurship being the key to solving a lot of our economic problems in the country, but we know that there are many, many barriers to entry. In your specific case, um, your skills were already there and inherent and you just had to use them. What has the entrepreneurship journey been like for you? Has it been difficult mm -hmm. and what have been the stumbling blocks in, mm -hmm. in tech specifically? 
Yeah, sure. I think I think look, it is it it's it's definitely been a, a tough journey. I can't, you know can't say it was it was super easy. I'm very mm -hmm. grateful for the pathway that that we followed. I think. Uh, the biggest challenges in, in tech specifically are twofold. The first is access to, you know, you really to, to use the world's best technology, you need the world's best engineers, the world's best developers. Yes. And finding, retaining, exciting and recruiting, you know, these kind of unicorns is tough. Just to give you an example, at our office you get unlimited free food, lunch, fancy <laughs> coffee machine, car wash. Yeah, uh, very Silicon Valley, yes. <laughs> literally whatever <laughs> it takes, yeah. you know, to make the geniuses happy. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have to do, we spend a lot of time on that. And then the second thing is, of course, access to market. I think in particular, we, we find that you know there's a there's kind of risk averseness in especially with like big corporates big clients mm -hmm. to try you know new smaller companies and of course that makes a lot of sense because you know they've they've got big bottom lines to manage and really it's been for us it's a it's a journey of building credibility yes and yeah. you know, creating that credibility that allows your clients to say, hey let's trust these guys with a bigger problem and mm -hmm. a bigger problem and mm -hmm. that's kind of been the evolution mm -hmm. of HD 24 Sandy, so how how is you know just touching on what Mohammed has just mentioned about um, risk averseness how easy or difficult has it been for you, for instance, to innovate as an entrepreneur, knowing very well that we don't have a bunch of venture capitalists just waiting to throw money at you know South African entrepreneurs, how how have you been able to do that? Uh, it, it was also not an easy journey, even for ourselves, uh, because we started um, uh, in terms of our very first innovation in 2014, mm. and then the one that we've just commercialized, which is the hotspot, which we've commercialized last year, took us about two and a half years. But uh, I, I must be honest, one of the, 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 the opportunities that I got, uh, coming from economic development background, I, I, I used to be a project manager, so mobilize resources. Uh -huh. So I applied for a business accelerator, and that's how I, I started to step into the space, um, research and development space, and then got assistance via uh, government uh, funding uh, from your innovation hub, your TIAs, and your Department of Science and Technology. Those are the guys that really helped us to get into uh, a push our innovation because it's costly to come up with the prototypes. We spend almost two million just to, to innovate mm -hmm. one product research to the, stage, to the stage where we can manufacture and say it is a stage where you can test it in the market. And even now, although we've like uh, now uh, in, uh, already commercializing, but research and development, especially in an innovative space, is continuous because every day you have to go out, meet your customers, understand what are their needs, and how do you innovate and improve your service. So it's it's it's, it's quite it's, it's kind of a, a tricky uh, scenario and then at the same time especially in our in our field what we've also realized that there was no standard for mm -hmm. our product so to go back and forth and, and try to find how do we get our product uh, standardized so yeah. that we build the credibility that Mohammed was talking about so at the same time you're building credibility of the product and to build credibility on the on the on the company itself yeah. so with all the funders that already uh, trusted you in terms of saying okay here I am um, I'm ready to get into this space and then we are trusting you with our money. Mm -hmm. So you have to be constantly trying to, to please them and make sure you go the extra mile to make yeah. sure that you build a credible reputation for yourself and your business. Sandeso so Mohammed, really appreciate your time. Congratulations mm -hmm. once again Thank on you. your awards. Um, you really are doing South Africa and South Africans pri proud. Uh, all the best in your journeys going forward. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for joining me in studio. Um, that was uh, our guests, Mohammed Simji and Sandeso Khai.